Hey guys, my name is Austin from awfulmedia.com and in this video we are going to continue the inventory system tutorial series and pick up where we left off with saving. It was requested quite a few times and I think it would be a good place to pick back up at. So to do this we'll set up two methods. We'll have a save method and a load method and at the start we'll call the load method and whenever we want to save the inventory we'll just call the save method. And these methods for testing will be called via clicking a button in the GUI. So I'm going to set up a button real quick. Do a new rect or a GUI dot button. And do a new rect. And I'll place this one 40 off the left. We'll do 400 off the top. Make it 100 by 40. This one will say save. This will be our save button. We want to call a save inventory method. So we'll go ahead and set that up. Then I want another button here that's going to load the inventory into our item list. So give me that button, new rect. This one will be 40 off the left, but we'll be uh, we'll be five. Mm, we'll be before 50 off the top, and then 100 wide, 40 tall. This one will say load save load it'll say load and this will call the load inventory method now let's go ahead and set up these two methods first one I want to do is the save inventory method and what we have to do is we have to go through the list and break up each item and save it to its own key in the player prefs file the player prefs file is a config file for the Unity player. We're allowed to save a few things into this config file. And if you worked with Unity before and you've wanted to save, you've came across this file quite a few times, I'm sure. And we've used it in the past in the Making a Simple Game series where we saved the, the uh, game state and the score and stuff like that. So we're going to be using the, the same way, but we're going to be breaking it down in a for loop and saving the inventory list each item individually to a key in the player prefs file and we're going to be using the int because we're going to be basing it on our item IDs which are integers so we're going to go through the player prefs class go to we're going to set int and the int I want to set we'll set it to a key called inventory and then the value I want to set is the item in our inventory but how do I do this we have to put it in a for loop done this a hundred times at least initialize our variable and then compare it to the amount of items in our inventory so do a dot count on the inventory and then increment that variable each loop and now we have an index to play with that will uh, represent the slot in the inventory and then I could say inventory I dot item ID and now we have that but the key now is not going to be unique for each item that we save to the file it's going to be inventory each time and if we do that it will overwrite that save with the next item in the list and that's not what we want to do so we want to make this a unique string for each pass through so I'm going to do a space there do a concatenation with an I so the index for that loop and then that's what we get so inventory space zero space one space two and so on throughout the whole inventory you don't have to have the space there you could just do inventory without a space and that would be just fine but I want a space so it looks a bit better in the file and that's pretty much all there is to it for saving the list to the player prefs to load it though it's gonna be a bit different because we have to bring in the item from the file based on its ID and the ID is not really going to be the index of the item in the item database but it should be if you're doing it the same way I am here with the uh, using the constructor we set up a while back I'm incrementing the ID of the item by one each item I add so it's going to be a unique ID each time and also doing it this way this ID is the same as the index in the database list. Now I want to set up the load inventory method. This method I want to also loop through each slot in the inventory, which will now be uh, int i is equal to zero, 
Let's initialize our variable. I compare it to inventory.count and then increment that variable. To load this in, I have to set the slot of the inventory equal to the item in the file at this index. So what I can do is we're going to be using a ternary operator. A ternary operator is like an inline conditional check. So we're going to be setting the value of the inventory slot to be equal to this or this based on the result of this. And that'll make sense here in a second, I hope. So we're going to say inventory i to be equal to something if something is true, else this if something is not true. So the boolean that we want to check if it's true or not is if the number that we're bringing in, if the ID that we're bringing in from the save file is greater than or equal to zero, because if it is, then it's not negative one. We know that and negative one would mean the item does not exist because we, our item constructor sets the item ID to be negative one when we use the blank constructor. And if you're not doing that, you have to be doing that to make this work. I'm not sure where we did that in the series but I'm pretty sure we did do it. But if we didn't, there it is. Just to item ID is equal to negative one in the blank constructor. So I want to check to see if this is equal to negative one or not by doing, we're going to do a player press dot get int. So get an integer that we set with the key of inventory space concatenate I. And then you can set a default value to this. There's two different constructors here. I can set a default value. And I would like to do that. I would like to do negative uh, one as the default value and see if this is greater than or equal to zero. So if it is, we know there's an item here. So we want to set this to be equal to that item. And to do that, I would do database dot items and I would pass it the player prefs dot get int that we just set up and be inventory space concatenate I. So that should give me the item that's at that ID or at that index, but that should be the same thing in your system if you're following along. Else, if that is not true, just do a new item. Because we know there's no item there, a new item is just a blank item, and that's what we want to fill our empty slots is a blank item. So this should work, probably not, since uh, I've not tested anything yet, but it should be okay. Let's see, we have our button set up, we do, Okay, so what I'll do is make sure I add a couple of items to our inventory on start. I'll add an item of zero and an item of one. There's a dog barking. Come to Unity and test this out. Hit I. Now I have my iron sword and my health potion. And I should be able to click save and it not break, good. And now if I click play, come back into here, hit I and hit load there. So it, it loaded the inventory that I saved to the computer. Notice it, it seemed like it got rid of these items. That's because those items were not in the save file. So anything that's not in the save file will be overwritten with what was in the save file. And we know these slots were empty in that file. So uh, you'll, you'll lose those items if you don't save them. Make sure you always verify if the player wants to save or not before overriding the inventory with a loaded inventory. And that's pretty much all there is to that. The only issue with this is if you do not have the ID that is the same as the index of the item database. And the way you could fix that, let's see, you could fix it with doing this, kind of doing the same thing we did with the add item method. So in the add item method, we are going through every item in the database and finding the item that matches the ID that we pass through. So you could follow that same method and just do it based on the ID that way. And when you load it in and save it, just change it up how you're doing that. But this is how you would do it. Uh, it's, it's a very basic technique for doing it, but it does do the trick. It's not the most secure. I mean, it can be hacked if you have anybody that wants to hack the inventory, but it being a single player game, wouldn't be that big of an issue. If you're doing it with a like a server-based game, you'd obviously have your uh, your important information stored on the server, and then you would check back and forth between the client and the server, and make sure everything is synced up right. And always believe the server in that case. Never believe the client, right? So if you're comparing the server to the client, always believe the server is correct.
but that's not that's way out of scope for this video uh, so I'm pretty much done with the saving now I've had a ton of requests to continue this series which is why I did this video and I do have a few more videos planned for the inventory series I want to do item stacking that was like the most requested thing I think I've ever seen it they want you want to be able to uh, stack items that are similar as long as they can be stacked onto one slot and have like a counter on there and then you can split the stack up or whatever and uh, if you want to use an item it would just use one of those items instead of you know the whole stack I don't think that'll be in the next video but it definitely will be here pretty soon the next video I think I'm going to cover a basic window for the inventory we didn't even do that we just I just kind of drew slots on the screen and filled them with items so I need to do a, a window on screen that the size and position is based on uh, more dynamic things so make the size of the window based on the size of the slots the count of the slots how many slots from the X and the Y the padding of the slots and stuff like that so the width of the window and the height of the window will uh, dynamically resize based on the slots within it and then after that we also want to do dragon uh, we also want to do draggable windows and uh, after that probably do stacking whatever comes first I don't know but we'll get to that. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you liked the video. Check me out on Twitter at AwfulMedia. Check out the website, AwfulMedia.com. Have a question, go to AwfulMedia.com slash forums and ask in the tutorial help forum there. I do check there more often than I do on the YouTube comments. And if it's an emergency, send me an email. My name is Austin, and I will see you next time.